in here. You don't know what to get out for a second. That's what it looks like. Now, are you on the inside or are you on the outside? Um, Go on. Um, Come after it. Um, Is that recording? Yeah, uh, Is it recording? Just make sure. Make sure it's recording. You just never know, like. You never know. Welcome back w welcome. to the Theory of Training. Welcome. Uh, today's video is about, basically we got a question asking about reverse linear progression, um, which isn't a big thing in like our community or in most training communities that will be listening to this. Uh, so we said we'd actually dive into it a small bit. So reverse linear progression is the reverse of normal linear progression. And what's linear progression, Fitz? <laughs> what linear progression, what it would usually mean for us um, as kind of strength and conditioning coaches would be that we'd start off with high volume and low intensity. And then as we creep our way along through a training cycle, we would gradually increase the intensity and decrease the training volume. That's what we'd usually see, and that linear progression refers to us linearly progressing the intensity of the exercise each week. Each week, what you would usually see um, in programs like are programs that have linear progression that you would usually see um, would be like the Smolov squat squat progression, where you start or like just that those rep schemes where you start with like tens, then you go to eights, then you go to sixes, then you go to fours, then you go to ones. Um, and you gradually decrease the uh, like relative volume each week and your intensity goes up each week. So reverse linear progression then, or um, RLP if you want to call it. Do they the, call it that? In the two papers I found. I didn't, yeah, I wasn't even aware there was enough of a following that there would be papers about it. So there was, oh, there was like one in 2003 or something and there was one a few years later. So Class. reverse linear progression is basically the exact opposite of what normal linear progression would be and that is you start with really really high or super max intensity so well above your 1rm and very very low volume and then you move on through the or like you increase your um your volume and decrease your intensity until you get to the end until you end up with very high volume and the almost opposite end of the scale then for your intensity so in the truest sense for strength training this just does not work for several different reasons and we'll get into reasons after why it might work for some very specific realms of training but for strength training in the purest sense so when people looking for squat strength um squatting deadlifting benching pressing any kind of strength movements why it does not work and it'll kind of so one of the first reasons is basically it doesn't make sense when you think about it so you cannot start off with doesn't make sense when you don't think about it. it it doesn't make sense at all really so you can't so if you think about you could maybe start with a hundred percent if you've just finished a very intelligent training block where where for example you've done normal linear progression right yeah so if you wanted to start the reverse linear progression after a period of detraining or you you're in what's known as a the weightlifting culture kind of call it a transition period so you've come off a transition oh, period. They, this it's in the books. Is it fuck? In the books. So the books? you are let's say you start at 105% or something, like you you're looking at like hundred and five or your back squat is two hundred, you start at two ten. How can you possibly start <laughs> at your one RM or in excess without having yeah. put in a long period of work? It it just doesn't make sense from that point of view. But let's say we start at hundred percent and we we're we're able we're a talented lifter and we can really you're very good at grinding out reps you manage to hit your hundred percent or you start somewhere like ninety five percent or somewhere like that. Where, where where do you go? Like what is the point if you just look at the program overall? Where are you ending up? Like why would you finish with tens? What yeah. is that going to do for you? So you're kind of missing out. I think you, how does that transition to an RM? Like if you look at the like a macro cycle, a whole section of it just doesn't make sense in terms no. of. So one of the, one of the, one of the first prerequisites that you have in a normal linear progression program is you start off by trying to add a little bit of muscle because muscle is required for strength training. So you need a little bit more muscle more often than not, unless you've exhausted the maximum amount of um, motor recruitment you have, you need to each time be adding a little bit more muscle. And now obviously this is harder and easier for some people, but the intention is at the start of a linear uh, progression, a normal cycle, you start off by adding a little bit more muscle through yeah the high volume which is what a normal linear progression starts with yeah yeah so with kind of traditional hypertrophy and like what a lot of the kind of stalwarts in strength and conditioning would kind of agree on is that you'd have a relatively high level of volume for hypertrophy work um and then when you kind of 
go into what we consider a taper which would be really low volume and really high intensity that during that taper then you would you wouldn't have any kind of hypertrophy going on you'd just be kind of maximizing your your ability or your skill to be strong so when Gerf talked about it not having there's not a huge amount of hypertrophy that can happen the other thing that can't really happen is you can't really have like any new motor learning uh going on at the same time so with skills are like with most of the strength movements there's an element of skill obviously it's it's a like graded thing from you might consider a snatch up at the very top all the way down to a a deadlift or a farmer's walk at the bottom there's still skill involved and um, the things that are involved in motor learning are like we have to do it enough times we need to be in something that you'd call like the optimal challenge point where it can't be so difficult that we never achieve it and that's probably what will happen a lot of the time if we're looking for those super maximal intensity levels at the start of a training cycle you're probably going to have a bit too much failure and you won't actually ever get to run through the motor pattern in your head um so it'd be like me trying to learn how to snatch with 100 kilos I'm not going to be able to actually complete the snatch or if I can complete it, I won't complete it kind of correctly or efficiently. And then I'm never uh, learning those good motor patterns. So if we look at another aspect of um, getting stronger required is uh, new CNS adaption. So yeah. if you look at the reverse linear progression, so 3911s just drove across there. What the fuck? 4911s. Um, There's obviously a Porsche rally on. Interim here. <laughs> so if you look at a normal Don't reverse tell them where we are <laughs> if you look at the, the headquarters another one what the fuck so in a normal um so if, or not normal if you look at a reverse linear progression cycle the hypertrophy happens at the end when you don't have time to learn to use it so in a normal linear progression cycle we start with our hypertrophy work we our high reps our tens our eights and, and to an extent our sixes so we've built new muscle and then as we move through the cycle we are learning to recruit this new muscle. Now, this new muscle is very minor. Like for the vast majority of people listening are natural athletes and they are probably gaining something like nothing. 0 0.05 very, kilo. Very, very small amount. But, yeah. but that is in, a, in itself enough to add a little yeah. bit more gains at the end. So as the cycle moves along, and we're not talking about your trend cycle, just your normal training cycle, you learn to... Circadian rhythm. <laughs> you, learn, you learn to recruit these high threshold. Uh, motor units is what they're called in the uh, the Shaviers. Yeah. So you learn to use these as you move through each one of the kind of uh, bands of ap relative in or absolute intensity. So you're, you start at your 60 percent, you move on to your 70 percent. Now, while this is happening, while you're adapting, you've had a little bit of muscle and you're uh, learning to use this muscle a little bit better. You're also learning to progressively practice your skill with heavier weights mm -hmm. but the problem with heavier weights is is you need a certain amount of time to allow for adaption so you need a little kind of uh what's the word i'm looking for a kind of um acclimatization kind yeah. of to these weights so you can it's very very hard to go from squatting 100 kilos as that's it with your max is 180 to try 190 it's going to feel it's just going to just literally feel like how it feels to you is going to feel massively heavy yeah. and your ability to squat these weights in is affected let's say we're talking about a squat how heavy it's going to feel or how heavy deadly feels off the ground so as you're moving through your linear progression, you're acclimatizing yourself, you're accommodating, you're practicing a little bit more weight to one week you're at 140s. It doesn't feel so bad, feels nice because you've started off very light, the weights obviously feel light to you. So you then don't feel bad. <laughs> you move, so you move on to the next week, you get to 150, it feels kind of the same as 140, but you're practicing, you're, uh, you're building up some confidence with these weights and you move on to the next week and so on and so forth. And you have hopefully in a smart program that moves you promptly through each one of these kind of uh, percentages of your 1RM, it gives you time to practice these weights and acclimatize to a little bit heavier each week or a lot heavier depending how big a jumps you're taking, but it's still giving you time to get used to what heavier weights will feel like. So when you make that jump to your super max, your 105 or 110 uh, PB attempt, it doesn't feel so heavy. Yeah, I think, so like we've obviously gone through all the reasons it doesn't work yeah. for strength training, like just to kind of give you some insight into firstly the name reverse linear progression is incorrect because you're just linearly progressing something else you're linearly progressing your training volume um by while decreasing intensity so you're still linearly progressing something um like kind of models that use things like did you say they call it rlp the two papers i found called nice 
Uh, so things that use, I'm going to use it now, RLP, uh, would be like, if you're taking somebody who's training for a marathon, right, and they're starting their training block there eight months, nine months out, they're, they have some running form, they're like marathon runners per se, um, you could be starting them with a speed block or a block where they're really focusing on balance or, or running form or something like that. And what you're going to see then is your relative intensities in terms of the pace they're running at are going to be high. So they're going to be running 5Ks at a fast pace. They're going to be running 10Ks at a fast pace. And then as they go on, their relative intensity is decreasing. So the intensity level you run a marathon with, is it like that's 20, 30% of what you would be sprinting at? So if you just take the skill of running, the relative intensity in a marathon is quite low. So when they're starting their training blocks, they start with those high intensities um, because they're run, they're sprinting, then they're running, then they're running to pace, then they're running to a slower pace, then they're running at race pace, which would be their marathon pace. And then all the time they're training. So like you you don't go first week into marathon training and do uh, 160K. Like you don't, that's just not what happens. Whereas when you got guys who are running, girls who are running ultras and running these like big long races, they're going to start with those high intensity, really fast runs for low volume at the start. And then in the same way that us as strength athletes or as power athletes, we're learning the skill of lifting heavier weights or lifting weights faster. They're learning the skill of recovering for more volume because that is the skill of, of running is the ability to cover huge amounts of ground, recover from those lar- large bouts of exercise and then get back on the road and run again. So another period in your training where you might want to use um, RLP or reverse no, we we'll call it RLP. We we'll call it RLP. Okay. Um, so, if you want to use this when you're looking to, you have picked a section of your training where, let's say, you might be a crossfitter and you want to increase the local muscular endurance of your legs. Okay. So, you pick um, maybe not back squats, but let's pretend we pick back squats. So, you pick belt squats or something like that. Wall if you, sits. Wall sits. Or if you, if you, let's say, you start at, um, you you would start at. It would be very useful in this scenario if you want to increase the local muscular endurance of your legs. So, you would start with your. Um, so the high intensity in this scenario would be like your 15 RM and then you would move on to three or four weeks and then you would start moving up to 20s and then 25s so we've started with our heavy or our highest intensity which would be our 15 RM which is don't it, be so condescending to them as to call crossfitter squat heavy well like but they're 15 RM that's going to upset them now no 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 I'm talking about in relevance he doesn't you. mean it no I do so if it's in relevance to your um in in the program so that oh. high intensity so that 15 rm is the high intensity section of this program so you would do your 15 rms and then you would through smart programming and hopefully you know what you're doing you move in on through your volume so you either very very minimally lowering your weight or see in this scenario the weight doesn't matter a whole lot but it's still it still will be in a drop in intensity, but it's not going to be a huge drop in intensity. Yeah. You're not going to be going from 150 kilos down to 60 kilos. You'd be going from something like maybe 100 kilos down to like 60 kilos, you know, something very minor yeah. in terms of percentage intensity. But in this scenario, it would be very useful to increase that. So you would be doing, in effect, doing that. So you wouldn't go, so you'd go from like your 15s and your 20s and your 25s. So that would be a scenario where it would be useful. Um, that's a very specific case. Yeah, and I think the last thing, yeah. or the last point I want to make is, like there's obviously loads of reasons that we mentioned physiological reasons that this doesn't work for strength training but there's also the psychological reason of like there's an inherent risk to doing heavier weights or faster weights or like more technically difficult lifts and like the psychological thing of that is like you could call it fear you could just call it like clerking lifts or whatever but with weightlifting and powerlifting and when you're lifting heavy weights or doing heavy throws or whatever it is, the amount of momentum you need, like psychological momentum going into lift heavier and heavier weights each week is gained through the use of a standard linear progression model. So you know you can do 200 this week because you did 190 last week. You know you did 190 last week because you did 180 the week before. Um, or like... Clockoff has spoken about like the the 200 kilo snatch before as it being like this mental thing in his head and or an interview asked him about it and he said uh there's no longer a mental block with with 200 kilos because he's gone to 190 more than eight times and he just said it's like 
always when he was training as a youth there was a kind of a thing about the 200 kilo snatch and and for us normal human beings there's a thing about the 200 kilo snatch and he said once you go to 196 eight times it's no longer an issue so i think we kind of covered all the bases so it's not very useful for uh strength training it will be useful for more endurance events uh but obviously then you'd have to kind of just accommodate your intensity like that and learn that it's not a huge change in intensity but it still is rlp as we're calling it (laughs) um we didn't really touch on hypertrophy did we yeah we did Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I hope that gets the message Care for the mental block there about the hypertrophy section. Just erased it from my memory. So I hope uh, I hope this has been useful. If you have anything else you would like to know, uh, we've all, we're always happy to do theory trainings on specific things that you yeah. don't know that much about or you would like to know more about them. Um, thanks for watching. So Thanks very much. Uh, the comments and the likes help the old algorithm apparently. Apparently. They um, also, we like talking about people's comments. Yeah, I like I, I like getting compliments. I like yeah. that. And I like seeing likes as well. I like seeing... Yeah. So if you do like it, just hit the like button. And we like the slightly inflammatory comments as well. Um, I like the overly positive ones. Do you? Yeah, I do, yeah. yeah you I like that. fucking guys are so great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Love it. <laughs>